you guys liked it when we reacted to the evolution of Spider-Man movies. So I figured we'd bring back the superheroes a little bit, and today, we are going to be reacting to the evolution of every Hulk movie. That means all the movies from 1977 all the way to early as 2022. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't even know there was a Hulk movie in 1977. That couldn't have been good, right? Hey, it could have at the same time. I don't really know. This video was by Kasan. I'll throw him up on the screen right now so you can see him. And by the end, I want to know which is your favorite Hulk movie out there. Let me know in the comments, the and let's jump in Hulk. here. 1977. 1977. Here we was go. The comic label's first huge splash in live action entertainment. Long before the words. See what Marvel I'm saying, man? He just looks like a buff guy that's green. The Hulk has got to be giant. Show aired from 1977 to 1982. Oh, it was a TV and show? In a number of TV movie sequels, which have been rerun for decades. Renowned bodybuilder Lou Ferrigno <laughs> was chosen to reprise the role of the iconic Marvel character due to his physique. Since there was no CGI back in the days, so the first ever Hulk we got was a naked Ferrigno painted entirely blue. <laughs> Originally, Richard Keel was cast as the Hulk. The first However, Hulk ever. As production on the pilot began, was just a guy. The producers believed he wasn't bulky enough. Oh no. <laughs> the Incredible Hulk returns. Is that 1988. Thor? The muscle bound monster returned to television screens in 1988. And the Dang, this was 11 movie, years later. He teams up with Thor. You will be shocked to learn that in this movie and its sequels, Lou Ferrigno dons a new hairdo as the Hulk. He still wasn't that big. Worsened. I mean, he's muscular. The replacement of his wig in order to better conceal his new hearing aid. But he did look much bigger in this TV movie. He's and the same size as Thor. Iron in order to prepare for it. He does look a lot beefier, though. Film acted Give as him a that. Pilot for a planned Thor television series, but that project never got off the ground. Poor Thor, man. He's had some good movies recently, though. I'm gonna go ahead and guarantee you that. Nope. Well, look at him. He's beefy there. I can go ahead and say that nobody's favorite movies are the 77 and 88 one. Incredible Hulk, 1989. Hold the on now. The success of the previous film saw him return to the TV screens next oh, okay. year in yet another Is he getting a little bigger? television movie. This time, nope, joining not hands yet. with Daredevil in order to defeat the infamous Wilson Fisk. This movie was the first instance of Stan Lee, the father of Marvel Comics, making a cameo in the movie. He then went on See, to do he's still not that more big. cameos in future Marvel projects. Like the film that preceded it, this film was also conceived as a backdoor pilot <laughs> for a potential NBC Daredevil Why he try series, to hit him like that? <laughs> but just like the previous film, that Daredevil series never happened. We need to start seeing some more recent ones, like the 2000s. I think those are when we got the CGI Hulk. You know, he's bigger, like he was in the comics. Comic accurate, that's the Hulk that I need in my life. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, by the way, like the Infinity Hulk, Infinity Wars Hulk, and Endgame Hulk. Hulk, you were just watching 2003. Here we go, 2003. After a hiatus of more than a decade, the raging green monster. Now, why does it always do that? We reacted to the last time. It was the Spider-Man one, and it just cuts off. It changes into music. Instead of him talking, it turns right back into music. But that's okay. I'll talk for him. We got the Hulk from 2003 here, and this is when it started to get good to me, anyways. Because now you can see, obviously, he's CGI, but this is the Hulk that we know and love. You know, he's massive. He's angry. He'd be destroying a bunch of stuff for sure. I mean, look, a tank? No problem. Flip it over. <laughs> and throw it. I remember this scene. It's been so long since I've seen this movie, by the way. He tossed the mess out of that tank. <laughs> The Incredible Hulk. This, I liked this movie. Just when everyone I don't care what anybody says. The 2003 says. disaster was rock bottom for the Hulk franchise. Rock Director bottom? Director Louis Leterrier proved everyone wrong by coming up with an even worse rendition in his 2008 sequel come reboot. Even worse? I like this one. Incorporating Tony I just Stark like movies. The story was a nice touch and a fun moment for fans. But with the MCU's new direction, almost everything Stark says in that scene makes no sense. The implication in this scene is that the Hulk was slated to be the villain in the upcoming Avengers team-up film. Oh, the Whoever villain? Marvel Studios prevented that abomination from happening deserves a pay raise. Oh my gosh, I forgot about that right there. I think I'm going to watch this movie again tonight. I haven't seen it in a long time, so maybe, maybe I saw it when I was a kid. And, you know, I thought it was good. I, I don't know, it's been a while. I'll watch it again and make sure. I thought it was okay, though. I could be tripping. What do you guys think about this movie? The Avengers, 2012. 
2012 I like me saw some the Avengers. Marvel Cinematic Universe finally getting it right when they assembled all their superheroes into a single movie. Yeah, the this Avengers. one was good. This was also when we got to For see sure. Mark Ruffalo's amazing performance as the Hulk that we now know and love, giving us iconic scenes like the one where Loki got a beating from him. The movie was a resounding success and at the time became the highest grossing film of all time not directed by James Cameron. It was Originally, so good. Edward Norton was intended to reprise his role as Hulk from The Incredible Hulk 2008. The Hulk but smash talks scene? between him and Marvel Studios fell through and Ruffalo <laughs> was cast instead. You see, I like this one, but Infinity War was my favorite movie, but my least favorite one with Hulk because he was absolutely disrespected. And then Endgame, he was like a nice version. That's not Hulk. Oh, this was funny right here. That scene where he tosses him. <laughs> Disrespect. <laughs> See, that's Hulk. Puny human. Puny God. Okay. My bad. Avengers <laughs> Age of Ultron 2015. The Marvel Cinematic Universe built on its momentum from the first Avengers movie and brought its band of superheroes this together one was pretty again good too. three years later in the Age of Ultron. Even though the movie did well in the box office, earning north of $1.4 billion, that's a lot of it money. is still considered to be the weakest of all Avengers movies. I and would agree with that. Mark Ruffalo's portrayal of the Incredible Hulk is based on Peter David's Hulk comics, in which the Incredible Hulk and Bruce Banner were two different people. Moreover, The Incredible Hulk's voice was provided by Lou Frigno in this film. Since oh, was it really? Since 1978, he played The Incredible Hulk in huh. practically every live action adaptation that's pretty cool. until 2015. Now that's incredible. That is incredible. I like that. So what he just said was the guy that first ever played him was the voice Thor for Hulk Ragnarok, in that movie. Almost 30 years after the first ever Hulk movie introduced Hulk and Thor working together, we finally now this got was a good movie. Iconic pair returned to fight off evil, albeit in a completely different era, played by completely different actors. In Taika Waititi's wildly entertaining ride, Mark Ruffalo replaced Lou Ferrigno Dang. to voice the Incredible Hulk for the first time in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. While this film adapts the Planet Hulk plot, it's been a long time since I've seen that one too. That Hulk was not originally planned to appear in the film, but no, oh, are we glad they decided to bring the Hulk on board for this? Yeah, that was a good movie. That was a real good movie. The battle scenes, especially when Thor got all electric like this right here, and then they dove at each other. It's actually this part right here, yeah. <laughs> that was a sick little scene. Woo! That nice punch. Avengers Infinity War. Infinity War. See, this was disrespectful right here. Hulk's third appearance as an Avenger came in Infinity War. I didn't like this. To bring Marvel's fourth phase to a conclusion. In two parts. I mean, I get the it. It's Thanos. A commercial blockbuster, but breaking every single box office. This is my favorite movie, by the way. way. Favorite movie of, of all time. Was the amazing performance of Mark Ruffalo as the Hulk and Dr. Bruce Banner, who had a combined screen time of over eight and a half minutes in the movie. Funnily enough, due to his history of accidentally spoiling previous Marvel films, Mark Ruffalo was handed a false script. He got destroyed, interview, man. He joked that the false script was better than the actual one. Hulk. Avengers Endgame. 2019. And now we've got we Endgame. We saw the last of the Incredible Hulk in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. All right, my boy Tony. And biggest movie in franchise history, Endgame. For the first time ever, the movie saw the introduction of Smart Hulk, which finally saw. <laughs> See, a Smart Hulk. I don't Dr. like that. Banner and his alter ego, the Hulk, as they lived harmoniously in a single physical form. During his interview, Mark Ruffalo said that the merging of Bruce Banner and Hulk, whom he plays in the film, was something that had been in the works for a long time. Let me let me know what you guys think about Smart Hulk. I just I like the more destructive Hulk, like big fella right here. Maximum occupancy has been reached. <laughs> That's the end of this video. Let me know your favorite Hulk movie in the comments below. And other than that, I will see you on tomorrow's video. Thank you for watching with me. I love ya. Goodbye.